So in this video, I want to show you a use I found for shape binders. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see from this how to use a shape binder to create things where you want to make multiples of the same size and have them linked together so that if you make changes, those changes will be propagated throughout the, um, the bodies that you create. So I'll show you that. First thing I'm going to do is show you my FreeCAD version. 0.19, it's 24291 Git, and it was the release from April 15th of 2021. So just in case your free CAD is operating differently to mine, that could be the reason if you don't have the same version as me. Okay, so first things first, what I want to do, I'm in part design as always, I start off in part design. And if you remember in the last video, I showed you how to create that startup macro. Um, so you can use that. If you have your startup macro, you can run that and start yourself to uh, sketch. I'm going to do it manually so those who didn't create a macro can see how we do it. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a file. And we are going to create a part and a body in that file. And then we're going to save this file as um, shapebinder. I'm going to just overwrite that file. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this, let me give this a name. I'm going to rename it to two body. And that's because the first thing I'm going to create is the number two on a little plaque. So let's, we're starting out in part design. Uh, we're going to create a sketch. We're going to create that on the XY plane. And we're just going to draw a box. And then we're going to constrain this box with symmetry, as we always do. We're going to give it a couple of dimensions. So we're going to call that one 100. And I'm going to scroll up to here. And I'm going to give this one a dimension and call that 75. And that will do for now. I'm going to close that. I'm going to pad it. And then just be careful, I'm going to reverse this so that this pad is on the zero, zero. And I'm just going to make this pad two millimeters thick. You'll see what we're, we're making here in a, in a moment. So I'm going to say OK. And this is basically a number plaque. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a number on here. And to create a number, we're going to need to go into the draft workbench. And in the draft workbench, we are going to select uh, shape string and I'm going to call that 2 because that's the number I'm doing. You have to pick a font file. I already have some fonts downloaded. Uh, if you don't know where to get fonts, if you look at my video that shows how to create a plaque, a uh, wooden engraved plaque, I show you all about downloading and where to download some very nice fonts. So you need to do that and then I'm going to create this um, text about 40 millimeters high and I am going to turn off my pad for the moment go back to my shape string and I'm going to select the, the zero zero point that's where I want it to be and I'm going to say OK so now there's my shape string and I'm going to go back to my pad turn that on and we can see that my shape string is now sitting nicely on top of my pad. Now I want to just reposition it. So I'm going to go to the shape string, go down to placement and position. And then I can literally just move that over. And I'm just going to eyeball it to the center. Uh, close enough for government work. And then I'm going to drop it down in the Y direction. And I think that's good right there. And then the finally, while we're still in the um, draft workbench, so we have a shape string. We're going to hit this little icon here. This is this uh, um, convert by direction between draft objects and sketches. So if I click that, the draft object creates a sketch. So that sketch is now called sketch 001. 
and it pops the sketch outside of this body. So I'm just going to click on it and drop it on top of that body. So now it's part of this body. I'm going to turn off my shape string. I'm going to go back to the part design workbench and I'm going to click on my sketch and I'm going to say pad. And I only want that to be one millimeter. So I'm just, I'm just padding it just so it's slightly higher. Then I'm going to say OK. Now, of course, I want to make number three. And I have a model and I have already the parts to make that model. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I'm in my part, I click on my part, create a new body. And I'm going to rename this body. I'm going to rename it to three body. OK, so you get the picture here. So what I'm going to do, this body is my active body. And I can tell that because it is emboldened when it's grayed out a little bit or when it's uh, not bold. That means it's not the active body. To switch between active bodies, I just double click. Now two body is active. Double click on three body and three body is active. You can equally right click on it and toggle active body and right click and toggle active body. Okay, so I have my three body and I'm going to go back to my two body pads. I'm going to click on the pad that is grayed out and I'm just going to hit spacebar. Now what that does is it turns off pad one and turns on pad two. I can equally click on pad one, spacebar, turn it back on. Pad, turn it on. The action of turning this one on turns this one off. Now I'm going to click away from the pad because I don't want the whole thing to be selected. So I'm going to click away like that and I'm just going to select this face. I'm going to turn it a little bit so you can see. I'm just selecting the top face. And then I'm going to hit the shape binder. Now remember my active body is three body. So when I create the shape binder it's going to create inside three body not inside two body. So I click that, it says it's face five, that's exactly what we want. We're not adding anything else. And that is my shape binder inside a three body. I'm gonna go back to the two body pad and just turn it off. Now I'm gonna click on the shape binder and I'm gonna pad that. I'm gonna reverse that pad and make that two millimeters. Say okay. Now I'm gonna to go to the, the shape string I'm going to go back into my draft workbench and I'm going to go down here where my shape string string says two. I'm going to change that to three because that's what I want next. Now all I need to do is convert that to a sketch. And once again, my sketch drops outside of my body. So I'm just going to click on it and drop that in. Now I have that sketch of a three inside my three body I'm going to go back to part design and I'm going to pad once more just one millimeter and say okay and now I have a three and if I turn that off turn my pad off turn my body off and now I turn on my pad two so there's my two there's my three and I can switch between them two two and two off and three and three on so to make it easier to know what's what it might be a good idea to just um, rename these things so if I rename this one I rename it and I'll call it three pad and I'll rename this one and I'll call it two pad that way I know which one has the actual number on it because I want to export those those would be the ones I 3d print so now if we go back to our original sketch and we just put a couple of holes in here one and two and I'm not going to constrain them for now I'm just going to show you what happens so I'm going to close that 
and now I have two holes in my number pad but if you look here something has gone wrong I now have pad results in multiple solids and this is not supported at this time well remember in our shape binder we had face 5 remember that the topological naming issue when you modify a model faces sometimes change their number so if I point to this face and you look down below you can see this is now face 7 so we need to go into the shape binder and we need to remove geometry which is I believe is this face here I can get in there oh, that's face 6 I gotta figure out what face 5 is that's face 5 there so we're gonna remove geometry and click on face 5 so that's gone I'm gonna add geometry and click on that face so it's now face 7 we'll say OK and now you can see my three pad is working again so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna switch on my two pad there it is I'll turn off that body and I'll switch on my three pad and there it is with the holes intact so just remember when you're using the shape binder if the shape binder is bound to a face and that face changes you may or you change that model that face may change its number and if it does that you may have to find out how to fix it and you can if you look down the bottom there you can see when I point at these faces it tells me that's face 4 this one is face 42 this one is face 44 face 4 face Forty-three. So these faces are different numbers from the original pad that we had here. Turn off three pad. Turn on that guy. So this this one has changed. Now, if I just change where those holes are, I don't think that's going to change the faces. So if we go back in now and we tidy up this thing, we say we take these two um, holes and we align them, give them a dimension and we make them equal and we make them symmetrical and we give them a dimension from there up we'll call that 42 say okay and Guy there, this guy over here, bring that out the way, bring that over there, and a symmetrical we have a dimension up there. So we just need to dimension this part across here. I'm going to call that 47. Let's make it round numbers. Say close, and now it's all constrained properly. We'll go back to our two pad, we'll turn that off, and we'll turn on our three pad, and you can see the holes have moved, everything is in the right place. But if I added a third hole, I could equally mess this up. So let's let's go and see if that happens. If I just poke a hole in the middle here, and I say that hole and that hole are horizontal, and this hole and this hole. Uh, equal and then I close this and now I have this three pad issue again so I'm going to turn on my pad and I can see that I turn off the three pad I can see the original pad has the three holes they work perfectly fine but now my shape binder is looking at the wrong uh, face and you remember it was face seven that it was looking at so if I go into this hole 
I can see that's phase five. I can see this is phase six. And that is phase seven. And this face is face eight. So I need to go into my shape binder. I need to say remove geometry and select face seven. Add geometry, select this face, say OK. And now my shape binder is back in good shape. And my three pad now, I turn off the original pad. My three pad now has the three holes in the right place. And if I turn that off and turn on my two pad, that also has it in the right place. So basically what we've learned is if you want to create something like this, it will work well if you create the initial geometry and don't change that. If you're going to poke loads of holes in it afterwards, just remember that it can mess up anything that you create with a shape binder based on face geometry. So it still suffers from the topological naming issue. And you can fix that essentially by doing a little bit of investigation, figuring out which face needs to be removed, figuring out which face needs to be re-added, and then it will work uh, with no problem. But again, if you're, if you're going to change geometry, not just the size of, of a thing, but the shape of it, that's where the faces will probably change their names. So hopefully this helped both in understanding the topological naming issue, but also in how you might use these shape binders to make multiple faces. And, and just as one more quick example of that, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna create a new body. I'm gonna rename that body to uh, four body and I'll just do one more just quickly just to show you uh, how this works so I'm going to turn off that two pad turn on my original pad my four body is now my active body and I'm gonna select just that face and I'm going I'm just gonna do that again I'm just gonna select that face I'm gonna hit face eight of my pad Say OK. So now I have a shape binder. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to pad that shape binder. I'm doing it reversed and I'm doing it two millimeters. And the reason I'm doing it reversed is I want everything to be on that zero zero plane when I create it. Then I'm going to go into my shape string. I'm going to change the string to be four. And then I'm going to go into the draft workbench. I'm going to create a sketch from that. I'm going to put that sketch into four body and I am going to go back into part design and I'm going to pad that just one millimeter and say okay. And so there you can see how quickly you can recreate um, geometry from there. And I'm going to change this to be or pad and the only reason I'm changing the the name is to avoid confusion so I just I just want to know which pads are which so you can see my four pad and I can turn off my four pad turn on my three pad and I can turn off my three pad and turn on my two pad so two pad and they each occupy the same space and of course now if I change this original sketch I'm gonna mess up uh, both of those shape binders so so I don't want to do that if I, if I were gonna do that I think I would just recreate maybe just quicker to recreate them than to do all the investigation one of the things I thought that this could be good for is if you were making a plaque that said happy birthday and then you had somebody's name in it so you create all the geometry for the plaque you create the happy birthday part and then you just have a, a shape string that is just the name underneath and then you could change it so you could make those to order as somebody ordered a new one happy birthday Ian then you just add Ian and it says happy birthday Meg you change the Ian to Meg 
and you have a, a pretty easy, pretty straightforward uh, way of creating um, something that is similar but unique. And as far as um, as far as the shape binders are concerned, I think once they fix the topological naming issue, uh, they're going to be a lot more useful in in that respect. So. If you have any questions, feel free, leave a comment. If you have any suggestions, any tips, definitely leave a comment. I enjoy seeing those things. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please also consider uh, joining our Patreon. We're starting to build up a little bit of momentum there. I'd really be happy if we can get a few more people on board. It's a great place for sharing ideas, helping people out and really coming up with ideas for the next video too. So uh, again, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.